Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, lecture on Enzyme. We are now on part 5 of this series of lecture. Inhibitors are substances that slow down or stop the normal catalytic function of an enzyme. So these inhibitors bind to the enzyme. So the binding could be competitive or non-competitive. In competitive inhibition, the the inhibitor competes with the substrate for the active site. The reason why they compete with the substrate because this inhibitor, um, these inhibitors they have similar charge and shape. Remember in the lock and key model, the reason why um, the enzyme recognizes the substrate because the substrate has similar shape with the active site. So the enzyme is uh, being fooled by the um, inhibitor. In uh, non-competitive inhibition, here the, uh, the inhibitor does not compete with the substrate for the active site. Instead, the inhibitor um, binds to the enzyme at a location other than the active site. So it's not necessarily that the uh, inhibitor binds to the active site. Okay. So it binds elsewhere on other part of the enzyme. So these are the types of uh, enzyme inhibition. We have reversible competitive inhibition. So as I said earlier, competitive enzyme inhibition is in the, the inhibitor resembles an enzyme substrate in the shape and charge. So the reason why um, there's an inhibition because the, the inhibitor um, fools the enzyme. The enzyme recognizes the inhibitor because it looks like the or it resembles the shape of the substrate. So this, this inhibitor binds to the active site and the inhibitor remains uh, unchanged. So there is no reaction that will take place because the, the inhibitor binds to the active site. So the, the, the enzyme cannot recognize the, um, the enzyme cannot accommodate the real substrate anymore. The enzyme inhibitor complex formation is uh, weak interaction by a hydrogen bonding. Competitive inhibition can be reduced by simply increasing the concentration of the substrate. So it says here, reversible. So to reverse the inhibition, simply by increasing by increasing the concentration of the substrate. Next is reversible non-competitive inhibition. In this inhibition, the non-competitive en enzyme inhibitor decreases the enzyme activity by binding to a site on an enzyme other than the active site. So when, um, when the inhibitor binds to the other site, or other location in an enzyme, there's a change in the structure of enzyme and prevents um, enzyme activity. So there's a conformational change on the enzyme structure and it will result in the change in the active site. So the enzyme, the enzyme's active site cannot recognize the substrate anymore because uh, they don't have the same or they don't have the uh, similar um, shape. Increasing the concentration of substrate does not completely overcome the inhibition. The third type of inhibition is irreversible inhibition. Here the enzyme is uh, inactivated because 
the inhibitor uh, forms a strong covalent bond with the enzyme active site. The structure is not similar to the enzyme's normal substrate. But uh, the inhibitor uh, forms bond with the enzyme and when, when the inhibitor is attached or bonded to the enzyme, the enzyme is inactivated. So the enzyme, the inhibitor bonds strongly and increasing substrate concentration does not reverse the inhibition process. So the enzyme is uh, permanently inactivated. Next is regulation of enzyme activity. Cellular processes continually produces large amount of enzyme and plentiful amounts of products if the process are not regulated. So the process by which enzymes uh, act can be regulated because if it's not, then um, energy will simply be wasted. So their, their uh, uh, actions or mode of action must be regulated. So the type of enzymes that are regulated are those allosteric enzymes. So what are the properties of allosteric enzymes? Allosteric enzymes have quaternary structure and we learned that uh, quaternary structures, uh, quaternary structure of protein, they have two or more polypeptide chains and they have at least two of binding sites where the substrates and the regulator bind. The active and regulatory binding site are distinct from each other. They are located uh, independently from one another. And the shape of the sites are different. Binding of molecules at the, regu at the regulatory sites uh, cause changes in the overall three-dimensional structure of the enzyme. So when this... Uh, when the molecules bind at the regulatory site, there will be a change in the shape of the enzyme, which allows change in the three-dimensional structure of the enzyme, which leads to the change in enzyme activity. Some of the regulators increase enzyme activity, and those uh, molecules are called, uh, or those substances are called activators. So when they increase enzyme activity, however, um, substances that decrease enzyme activity, they are called inhibitors. Let's see what is feedback control. Feedback control is a process in which activation or inhibition of the first reaction in the reaction sequence is controlled by a product of the reaction sequence. Let's have a hypothetical reaction. A substance A is converted into B by a certain enzyme. Let's designate enzyme 1. And the B product is converted into a C by another enzyme. So when we say a feedback control, um, here we can... Uh, we can assume that when there is an increase in C, okay, there's an increase in the concentration of C, um, it could inhibit, okay, this enzyme, okay, because there's still an increase in uh, C. So what it what it does, what this product does is to serve as inhibitor for the enzyme E2 so that uh, E2 will um, slow down in converting uh, the substance B into substance C. Okay, This happens especially if the body's requirement for the substance C decreases. Okay, so to... Um, 
to res or to preserve of course the amount of uh, energy in the in the system so for example regulators at the particular enzyme may be um, products of the entirely different pathway of the reaction within the cell or compounds produced outside the cell so these um, regulators can some way or the other activate um, these enzymes by slowing down or increasing their um, activity now we'll see the proteolytic enzymes and zymogen and these are considered to be the second mechanism of regulating enzyme activity production of enzymes in zymogen or in active uh, form what are zymogens these are enzymes that are um, generated as inactive but they are uh, turned on or activated at the appropriate time and place and some of the or most of the proteolytic enzymes or the enzymes that hydrolyze uh, peptide bonds these enzymes are um, generated as inactive in the pancreas and once they are brought to the site of action they are converted to um, active form just like what uh, what is shown in this uh, illustration so this is the cymogen or this is the enzyme that is inactive so there's a section in the enzyme that is removed okay and one when that enzyme is removed the active site of the enzyme becomes accessible so when that um, section has been removed the enzyme or the pr proteolytic enzyme is said to be um, active the third mechanism for regulation of enzyme activity is what we call covalent modification of enzyme covalent modification is a process in which enzyme activity is altered by covalently modifying the structure of the enzyme this uh, modification is by addition of a substance or a group of substance to an enzyme or removing a group of substance from the enzyme substances that inhibit enzyme activity include the antibiotics antibiotics are substances that kill bacteria or inhibit their growth by specifically um, inhibiting the enzymes that are essential to the life processes of the bacteria examples of antibiotics are the sulfa drugs sulfanilamides is structurally similar to PABA and PABA are uh, needed by the bacteria to produce folic acid however sulfanilamides are um, competitive inhibitor of PABA so when folic acid is not produced in bacteria the growth of bacteria is retarded and eventually um, bacteria are um, killed or destroyed however sulfa drugs don't affect humans because we absorb folic acid from our diet so as you can see in the in the picture these are the groups variation or uh, antibiotics that belong to sulfa drugs penicillins are potent antibiotic they are accidentally discovered by alexander fleming in 1928 and uh, from then on there are several structurally naturally occurring penicillins and some some are um, derivatives or synthetic derivatives of penicillin so penicillin 
have a general structure as, as, as you can see in this picture this the general structure of penicillin it contains um, beta lactam ring with this structure the thio thiazolidin ring and um, the structures of different penicillin differs in the R group so as you can see in this um, in this side these are the variation of penicillin structure um, these penicillins they selectively inhibit the transpeptidase by covalent modification of serine residue transpeptidase is an enzyme that catalyzes the formation of peptide cross links between polysaccharide or polysaccharide strands in bacterial cell wall